Well, hi, and welcome to a video supplement for my written review for the Denon AVR S900. The video is a little long, and I know you might not want to watch all of it, so here's a list of what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to go through the features and connections on the front and back panels, show some of the other hardware in the box, and then go through the setup menu in a little bit of detail. So I'll start with a look at the main unit. So here it is, the front panel. Uh, I haven't taken any of the stickers off yet. So to select your input source, there's a knob here that you can twist. You can also set up in the menu to ignore some of them if you want. There are four uh, buttons to directly select a source, and even though they're printed on there for select ones, you can assign them to any ones you want. There's two buttons for zone two, and then there's some uh, buttons for the FM tuner. Uh, there's a dimmer control for the front panel and also a status uh, for the input coming in. There's a headphone jack, an info button, shows you more status. There's sound modes that you can directly access on the front panel, uh, HDMI input, USB port, and then an uh, input for the setup microphone. So now looking at the back of the unit, so the power cord, of course, uh, it's not detachable. Just wanted to point that out, but uh, let's get that out of the way. Looking at some of the other things on the back, so there are two antennas for the built-in Wi-Fi. Uh, and they have some nice little uh, connectors there that you can plug them into, keep them in place. Those can be detached because they kind of interfere with some of the inputs, but you can take those uh, connectors off to make it a lot easier to plug things in. So I'll put those up out of the way. So looking at the inputs here, there's your Ethernet jack, uh, your digital audio inputs, uh, one coax and two optical. You have your HDMI inputs. You have seven on the back, again, that one in the front, and you have two HDMI outputs. There are four sets of analog inputs. Uh, you have your subwoofer pre-outs. You have component video inputs, two in, uh, one out. And then you have a composite uh, video and the subwoofer jacks. So uh, you also have connections for antennas for the built-in tuner. And then the speaker posts, uh, last year's model had ones that you uh, would pull out, uh, spring-loaded. These have the regular twist kind, so you can put uh, bare speaker wire in or you put banana plugs into the, the back. So those are the typical ones that a lot of ones have. The Wi-Fi antennas, they, they have a good range of motion. It's not quite uh, 180 degrees each way, but it's pretty close. So you can swing them uh, around where you want them. So that's the back panel. So here it is in place. I have all the wires hooked up. Before I go through the on-screen setup menu with you, I'm going to point out some of the things that come in the box. Uh, some are pretty standard. For example, it comes with a remote control. Now this remote doesn't control other equipment like your TV or Blu-ray player, but it does have nice large buttons that are easy to find and easy to push. Comes with the Odyssey microphone here. Some of the stuff that's not necessarily standard, uh, this I find particularly nice. Uh, Marantz and Denon come with stickers like this. These are stickers to put on your speaker wires and also the cables coming from your components so you can label them. It makes it incredibly nice and easy when you're unplugging and plugging things in to find uh, which cable you're going after. So when, especially when you have a lot of speakers to hook up, that's very nice. Comes with a quick start guide and a CD with the owner's manual on it. You can also download that owner's manual off of the Denon website, which is nice. And something which is, I think, new this year, uh, it comes with a make your own tripod for this microphone here. So you don't want to set that on top of pillows or boxes. It's nice to have it on a tripod, and if you don't have one yourself, they include one now that you can make, which I think is pretty nice. In fact, let me make that right now. Okay, so here's that tripod all put together. The instructions are very easy to follow, um, incredibly easy to follow. One of the nice features here is that it has a place here where the two pieces go together where you can decide what height you want it. So you can lock it into place. For example, if you're putting it on top of your couch or you're putting it on the floor. So you can adjust the height of this. You can probably tell here it's fairly tall. But anyway, I'm going to get that set up and then go through the setup menu with you. And now the setup menu, which I think is top notch, but I am going to apologize because when I first did this, the camera was too far away, so some of these images are blurry. I did redo it for a lot of it to make it more clear, but some of it is going to look uh, a little blurry. So right when it starts, it asks you for your language preference. Uh, then it goes into the setup assistant. This is as soon as you plug it in and turn it on. You can also do it through the main menu. Uh, it tells you everything that you should have in place to uh, get going with this. 
Uh, then it goes through the speaker setup, which I think is very nice. It's very graphical. It, it shows you how to do various things. So it, it shows you images about how to connect your speakers. Uh, it also, I think this is pretty nice for the, the first timers. It shows you how to uh, strip speaker wire and also you know points out to twist it to get the copper wires in place. Um, it also shows how to insert it into the speaker jacks on the back. Uh, so a lot of you already know how to do this, but for people that aren't used to it, I think this is a really nice graphical representation. Then it goes through uh, the various speakers, uh, asks you if you have certain ones and shows you where to connect them on the back of the receiver. Uh, it does turn the amps off when you're doing this, so you're not risking hurting anything. Um, and then it uh, also shows you not only the, the main speakers, but also where to plug in a subwoofer if you have one. It verifies that you have everything. Uh, and then it will go into doing a speaker setup, which actually plays kind of a nice tune when you're going around to make sure everything's connected right. Uh, but it has you turn on your subwoofer first, uh, then it will go through the various setups. So hopefully you can hear that tune in the background. I'll talk over the top of it, but it's a lot better than just the white noise or the beeps that a lot of a lot of systems will do. Uh, then it goes into speaker calibration. Now this does play some loud uh, beeping tones uh, to get the right setup for your speakers uh, and it will go around all of them. Uh, you, you'll see this, it shows you where uh, to set the microphone. So you put it on that tripod that you make or one that you already have, put it in place. Uh, then you're gonna begin the test. You wanna stand out of the way because uh, it is gonna be kind of loud and you don't wanna interfere with the noise. So you can hear the tones going on now, and, and I'm not going to go through all of this. So this says test one of six. I know it looks blurry. You have to do it at least three times, at least during the initial setup. Uh, you don't have to do all six, but that's to put the microphone in different positions uh, and try to get a more rounded calibration for your listening position. So it'll go through this uh, for a few minutes, but it doesn't take too long. Uh, and you can see on the screen, hopefully, that it's highlighting the speakers that are playing. Then it will, once you're done with all that, it goes into a network setup uh, and also a input setup. I skipped the network part for this video. For the input, this is kind of nice. So you go through, especially if you're a first timer, you tell it which component you want to hook up. Uh, you select that, uh, you tell it what kind of connection you have, uh, and then it's going to show you where that connection is on the back of the unit, You know what its label is. Uh, it will ask you to connect it, uh, and it'll do a connection test then. For that and I'm gonna skip that part uh, then you can say that you're you go through all that you can say you're done you can either agree or disagree to do the usage data and then you're all done with the setup well that's the end thank you very much for watching I hope it helped uh, if you have any questions feel free to leave me a comment thanks a lot